I am Anjita. I am doing PhD in cosmology at the Center for Theoretical Physics uh, under the supervision of uh, Maciej Bielski. Uh, so uh, today I am talking about uh, uh, how redshift is used to unlock the mysteries of the uh, universe. The today's talk is divided into mainly four sessions. Uh. In the first session, uh, we will uh, look into what is light, the definition of light, uh, uh, everything. And uh, the next session, uh, we will go to light from celestial objects. Uh. The third session is uh, uh, third session is the main session, what is redshift. Uh, and the final session, we will look at uh, applications of redshift. Uh. In the final session, we will, talk, uh, uh, we will look into how uh, redshift uh, uh, unlock the mysteries of universe. So we are homo sapiens, uh, we are humans, homo sapiens. The word homo sapiens uh, originated from the Latin language uh, and its meaning is a uh, wise human. We have uh, mainly five senses, uh, hearing, sight, taste, smell and touch. Vision is one of our senses uh, so, and it has played an important role in uh, human evolution also. How we see, uh, how uh, how do we see uh, objects? Uh, we see objects because of light. Light bounces off the objects and enter our eye and brain process the information. Thus, we can see the objects. So, my point is, light is the essential stimulus for vision. And you can see in this example image, the human eye perceives the reflected light from this plant. Then, brain uh, after entering uh, entering human eye, then uh, brain process the information. Thus, we can see uh, this plant. So, uh, light is uh, light is very important for uh, human lives also. Also, light is very important in astronomy because mo majority of observations in astronomy are made through light signals. We capture the light from celestial objects uh, and uh, study our universe. The next question is, uh, what is light? In some cultures, uh, light is considered as a symbol of life, justice, and wisdom. Ancient Greeks uh, believed uh, light is uh, some kind of a substance uh, that uh, came out from ice. But in physics, uh, we have uh, theories uh, uh, to understand the uh, 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 nature of light, uh, including Newton's corpuscular theory, Huygens' wave theory, Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, and the quantum theory of uh, light. We are not going into deep uh, uh, all these theories, uh, but we are focusing on Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. During 1860s, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish physicist, uh, he, uh, uh, he described uh, light as an electromagnetic wave. That was the unification in, uh, unification in physics, because uh, uh, until that time, uh, electricity and uh, magnetism are considered as a different field. But James Clerk Maxwell, uh, he, he said electricity and uh, magnetism are not uh, the separate field. He unified uh, electricity and uh, magnetism through his uh, m uh, famous equations in physics, uh, Maxwell's uh, equations. So he described also light is an electromagnetic wave because electric and magnetic field are coupled together and are traveling as a wave at the speed of light. So light travels uh, 300,000 kilometers in one second. So now we know what is light. Light is an electromagnetic wave. We are considering this definition of light in this talk. These are the two important concepts uh, related to a uh, wave, frequency and uh, wavelength of a uh, wave. Light is a wave, electromagnetic wave, because electric and magnetic field are coupled together traveling as a wave. So uh, light, wave, light is also has a frequency and a wavelength. You can see, consider this wave, the highest point of a wave is called a crest. The lowest part of wave is called a trough. The distance between Adjacent two adjacent crust is called a wavelength. It's also equal to the distance between two adjacent trough. So the wavelength is the, the distance between two adjacent uh, crust. You can compare these two waves. The dis uh, this uh, wavelength is higher uh, in the second wave compared to the first wave. So we can say the first wave has a short wavelength compared to the second wave. So the next uh, concept is the frequency. So if you consider a point here, then this wave is allowed to pass through this point. Then we are counting the number of crest passing in one, uh, one second. If, uh, if through this point, if five crest passing through uh, this point, then we can say the frequency of wave is five. If it is a 10 raised to 10 crest will pass through this point, then we can say the frequency of uh, this light wave is a 10 raised to 10. This is the concept of wavelength and uh, frequency, and uh, this is very important to understand uh, what is a redshift. So keep in mind that uh, frequency and uh, wavelength. 
So we, uh, we tell uh, different frequencies produce uh, different kinds of light. Light is electromagnetic radiation. So different uh, frequencies produce different electromagnetic radiation. All these different electromagnetic radiation are represented in one frame. This representation is called the electromagnetic spectrum. All these uh, different electromagnetic radiations uh, are very useful in daily lives, uh, you can see. This is the visible part uh, because uh, uh, this is the only electromagnetic radiation we can see uh, by our naked eye. These are the uh, visible light we can see, uh, the uh, visible part only. Then infrared radiation, this kind of remote sensors and uh, television, uh, television con uh, remote controls uh, produce uh, infrared radiation. And the microwaves uh, we used in microwave oven and uh, uh, radio waves we used in radio stations. And the ultraviolet radiations we used in UV lamps uh, and X-rays we used in um, uh, hospitals. Uh, gamma rays we can we can sense uh, uh, gamma rays more in, uh, near to nuclear plants. My point is uh, very simple because all these electromagnetic radiations uh, uh, it's very useful uh, in uh, in our daily lives. This, uh, all these uh, electromagnetic radiations uh, travel at the speed uh, same that the speed of light. This is a three uh, three hundred thousand kilometer in one second. So uh, this is the first session, uh, because in the first session we understand what is light. Light is an electromagnetic wave and, and it has a, a frequency and a wavelength. Different frequencies produce a different electromagnetic uh, radiations. This is the first session. And the second session we are going to uh, look into uh, the light in our universe. So we have uh, our Earth, our planet. Then this Earth and the other seven planets revolving around the uh, Sun. This is our star system. Sun is, our, sun is the center of our star system. Our star system is called the solar system. Then the Milky Way. Uh, because these kind of star, uh, so many star systems and uh, gas, dust, uh, everything grouped together and uh, form a galaxy. Our galaxy is Milky Way. It's a spiral shaped galaxy. You can see the position of Sun here. Uh, 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 position of Sun here. And it's so small uh, compared to the size of galaxy. There are other galaxies also. We have a neighboring galaxy. It's Andromeda. There are other galaxies, Large Magellanic Cloud and a Triangulum Galaxy. There are 200 billions of galaxies in our, uni in our observable universe and 200 to 300 tri billion trillion stars in our universe. This video uh, demonstrates uh, the vastness of our uh, universe. You can. So the galaxies form a, uh, one group, it's called uh, clusters, galaxy clusters, and uh, so many, uh, the group of galaxies are called uh, clusters, uh, and then so, so many uh, clusters form a super cluster. This is the uh, super local super cluster. Um, these are the, because our Earth and then star system, then galaxy, the group of galaxies called clusters, then group of clusters are called super clusters because our universe is big, uh, more than we think. This, uh, this video is the demonstration of uh, our, our size of our universe. 
So, uh, uh, in the first slide, uh, I told uh, we capture the light from celestial objects. Where does this light come from in the universe? The light primarily comes from sorry. The light primarily comes from stars. Inside stars, uh, the high temperature, uh, high temperature and the elements, ions, uh, make a favorable condition for nuclear fusion reactions. Due to these nuclear fusion reactions uh, inside stars, uh, they produce a tremendous amount of energy in the form of light and heat. So uh, we observe uh, different uh, light, uh, light uh, stars doesn't produce uh, only particular wavelength of light, no. Uh, stars produce a, different, a wide range of different wavelengths of light. So we observe different wavelengths wavelength of light this uh, this is a demonstration because you can see uh, if we uh, if we observe uh, the more uh, more light uh, at the uh, 4000 angstrom then uh, we can uh, we will get a peak at 4000 angstrom wavelength so a star has a peak wavelength of uh, 4000 angstrom this is a picture from uh, sdss survey so uh, in this slide we explain uh, we know uh, we are collecting light from celestial objects uh, so this uh, mainly uh, in universe the light comes from uh, comes from stars and the next question is in the first session we uh, uh, we talked about what is light uh, then we collect light from celestial objects the next question is uh, how to collect this light we are using telescope we have uh, two kinds of telescope the space-based telescopes and the terrestrial telescopes. And the space-based telescopes, we operate in space. James Webb's telescope is an example of space-based telescope. And the terrestrial telescope, we operate uh, in, uh, in Earth. These are, these are the pictures I showed when I was in Torun and uh, London. This is the radio telescope uh, in Torun. This, uh, and it is one of the uh, largest radio telescope in Poland. And this is the optical telescope in uh, University College London Observatory. Uh, why it is called a radio telescope means uh, it collects lights, uh, electromagnetic radiation in the radio range. And the optical telescope collects uh, the light, mainly uh, the light in the visible part. That's why the names indicate the radio telescope and the optical telescopes. So the next thing is uh, the journey from astronomy, uh, the stars emit light, uh, so the journey from uh, stars to telescope. The light's journey from astronomical sources to telescope is not smooth because uh, during this journey, the light uh, lose or gain energy. How this uh, losing or gaining energy, this energy change uh, affect uh, our understanding uh, to universe. You can see uh, this energy and frequency and wavelength of light is related. If energy change, then frequency and wavelength of light is also changed. So you can see uh, if uh, if uh, during this journey, if light and uh, light attain energy, gain energy, then frequency increase, wavelength decrease. So this uh, this is called a blue shift. If energy, uh, if it if it lose energy, then frequency decrease, wavelength increase. This is called a redshift. So uh, how this? Uh, if the light uh, from astronomical sources to a telescope during this journey, light lose energy, then frequency decrease according to this formula. Uh, if energy energy lose, then frequency decrease. What about wavelength wavelength increase? So this is happening. This is called a redshift. So in uh, in this uh, in this demonstration, you can see this is the stationary uh, and a reference uh, spectrum. Uh, in this uh, in this example, I'm showing the visible part of the spectrum. We are collecting a visible uh, visible visible spectrum from a star, and this is the reference uh, reference spectrum. You can see uh, reference spectrum has uh, no redshift or blue shift. If the spectrum is if the light uh, light is undergoes a redshift, then the spectral line is shifted to longer wavelengths. If it is blue shifted, then the spectral line we observe, uh, we observe the spectral line move to um, a lower part of wavelength region. So you can see this shift is called a red shift. Now we know the red shift. Red shift is the electromagnetic radiation that is emitted or reflected from an object is shifted towards less energetic end of the spectrum. 
So, uh, first, the discovery of redshift is awarded to the American astronomer Besto Slipher in 1912. He observed uh, 50 uh, spiral nebulae. Nebulae are the celestial objects uh, in uh, universe. They, uh, he observed a redshift of uh, 50 spiral nebulae and calculated. So, the discovery of a redshift is awarded to Besto Slipher. But the term redshift is used uh, before him. Uh, 1908, Walter S. Adams, uh, he used redshift, the term redshift uh, in in hyphenated form. So this is a basic quantity to understand our universe. Uh, we will see uh, in the following slides uh, how redshift uh, uh, helps us to understand the universe. So uh, now we know during the journey from astronomical sources to telescope, uh, the energy change. Why does uh, why does this energy change? That's the next question. The there are mainly three reasons uh, in cosmology. Uh, we are uh, we are saying the first reason is the gravity. So space is like a space is a fabric according to Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity. So massive objects uh, warp the space uh, more. So uh, if this uh, this is called uh, this warping is called uh, gravitational potential. If the light uh, coming from coming from here and uh, and it enters this gravitational potential well. To, to, uh, to come out from this gravitational potential well, it has to do work. This work done lose energy, and uh, the, the energy change, the losing energy uh, lead to a redshift. This redshift is called a gravitational redshift. The next reason is the uh, relative motion effects. This re before this relative motion effects, to understand relative motion effects uh, and a redshift, uh, we know uh, when you the classic example of Doppler effect. Uh, Doppler effect uh, when you uh, when you stand in a bus station, if the uh, ambulance came uh, came, then if it uh, uh, the ambulance approach uh, the frequency, more number of uh, waves will uh, ca come to our ears, uh, and the pitch of the sound is greater. Mm? If it is going away from us, uh, then the frequency uh, frequency decreases this is also happening if there are two points if there are two points uh, and due to their uh, inner uh, velocities uh, in celestial objects uh, they are moving away from us uh, then if we are observing from here and light uh, coming from here and if they are moving uh, receding from us uh, then uh, the, the number of uh, uh, number of waves uh, coming here and dictated will be less if, uh, than th than it is stationary this is called uh, uh, this velocity uh, they are uh, they are having called peculiar velocities um, this uh, this causes uh, this causes the frequency shift uh, frequency decrease uh, and this is another reason for a redshift but the main reason is the cosmological ex expansion. Uh, this is well explained by Mache uh, in cosmological expansion because of cosmo due to cosmology, uh, our universe is not static. It is expanding. And due to this expansion, the two points in our universe, uh, in the distance between two points in our universe, increasing with the time. This is well explained in Mache's uh, uh, slide, I think so. And uh, so. Due to this, uh, uh, due to this receding, uh, receding motion, and the same thing happened uh, uh, here also. The number of, uh, uh, if we dictate uh, here, and uh, the astronomical source uh, emit a light from here. So the num uh, if if it is receding, the number of uh, the number of crust arriving uh, in one second is less. That's a frequency. Then what is the number of crust arriving uh, per unit time is the frequency. If it is uh, less than in, than in the stationary state, uh, so if it is receding, fr receding from each other, then the number of crust arriving in this, uh, this point is less. So the frequency, uh, uh, frequency decreases. This is called a cosmological redshift. Frequency decrease is called a cosmological redshift. So uh, now, uh, and now we know what is light. Light is an electromagnetic wave, uh, and uh, in the universe, uh, primarily light uh, comes from uh, uh, stars, uh, and uh, we use uh, telescopes uh, to uh, to collect this light. Uh, during this journey from astronomical sources to telescope, uh, uh, redshift happened. So the next question is uh, how to measure this redshift. We can measure this uh, redshift. Uh, um, in the similar way I told, uh, we collect the spectrum of uh, spectrum from the stars uh, and find the shift in spectral lengths. So that's a traditional way to measure the redshift. This uh, redshift is called a spectroscopic redshift, but I'm not going into deep into the measurement of redshift. The second way is the photometric way. Nowadays, uh, machine learning algorithms are used to, uh, uh, used to uh, estimate a redshift by using the second method. So, uh, the next, uh, from uh, from now, uh, we are talking about uh, the applications of redshift. 
how red shift can be used to calculate the distance uh, distance of celestial objects from us and uh, hubble uh, hubble and uh, lemeter independently they uh, they calculate the red shift of uh, uh, red shift of celestial objects uh, during 20th the 19th century this is called uh, because due to cosmological expansion uh, the objects are receding from each other the rate uh, how how much they are receding uh, in one second this is called receding velocity and this receding velocity and distance is related if the uh, we are here and if the object is here and it to recede from us uh, less rate compared to if the object is here that means receding velocity and distance is directly proportional this is called a hubble lemeter law and uh, uh, this receding uh, this receding velocity and uh, redshift is related so if if we know the redshift, then we can calculate the receding velocity. Thus, we can calculate the distance. This formula will be more complicated if the distance is very far from uh, us. So we can. Uh, the point is uh, that we can est we can estimate the distance of celestial objects uh, by using a redshift. So redshift is used as a distance indicator. Uh, distance is the basic quantity for cosmological analysis uh, to understand the cos uh, to understand our universe also. This is the famous plot uh, from uh, Hubble's uh, proceeding, uh, proceeding in that 19th century. And this was the uh, first indication of uh, our cosmological expansion. Universe is not static, universe is expanding. The next is the, uh, we know that uh, uh, the uh, speed of light is uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. Even from sun uh, to reach, uh, the sunlight uh, takes uh, eight minutes to, to reach us. Also, if the galaxy is uh, far, uh, far away, billions of years from uh, from us, uh, it takes billions of years to travel uh, to reach uh, 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 to reach that light uh, from that galaxy to us. This is called uh, the time elapsed between when we detected the light there on Earth and when it was originally emitted by the source. This time is called uh, look back time. Because of, uh, if the light started at the time t1, but it takes due to uh, light velocity, light speed, it takes uh, time to travel to reach us. So this uh, this time difference is called a uh, look back time. We can't instantly see uh, that object when it uh, start. Uh, when it instantly we can't see uh, sun. We are seeing the sun uh, eight minutes ago. Sun. So this is the look back time. Uh, this uh, time elapsed by using a redshift. We can calculate this look back time, and, uh, and by uh, look back time, we can probing the cosmic evolution. How it is means uh, we are collecting the uh, we are collecting T one state uh, uh, the light emitted from the source at the time of T one. Then we are collecting the uh, that light uh, at the T two uh, T two time. Uh, then we are collecting uh, we are collecting the uh, time uh, we are collecting the light from T uh, another time. Comparing these two observations, we can calculate we can probe the uh, how our universe changes this is the way uh, cause uh, uh, this look back time is calculated from redshift uh, this is a redshift is an uh, redshift can be used to probe the cosmic evolution also so the next uh, uh, next thing is the uh, cosmic microwave background in 1965 pensias and wilson uh, they were working in bell laboratory in america and uh, they detected an unusual uh, unusual signal uh, in sky and uh, they they thought okay it may be the noise but it was not noise it, uh, it uh, they uh, they cleared all the uh, all the noises everything but they then also they detected the same excessive signal in the sky and they uh, they turned their antenna in all directions in the sky. This radiation is called a cosmic microwave background radiation. Then they started to think, what is the reason of this cosmic microwave radiation? So uh, they arrived. Uh, they arrived at this conclusion. Fourteen billions ago, universe uh, universe began. When a universe birth, universe was in the uh, was in the size of hydrogen atom size. Then it was uh, uh, it exploded. The Big Bang happened. Before Big Bang, uh, we don't know what, what what is before Big Bang. Then after that, uh, after three uh, three eighty thousand years, the universe was uh, hot, dense, and uh, uh, even atoms can't survive uh, in that uh, extreme conditions. In that extreme conditions, only uh, only charged particles are there, and also light. This light is 
scattered with uh, this uh, charged particles. Mm. Then after that, uh, after that, uh, some time, um, the universe started to cool, and uh, these charged particles uh, and uh, protons, everything uh, combined together, form electrically neutral atoms. Then light was alone, and uh, light has uh, nothing to scatter, uh, scatter with. And uh, this free light started to travel freely. After getting freedom, light started to uh, travel free in the universe. This light, uh, that time uh, the light was in infrared region, uh, but uh, due to this universe expansion, the redshift happened uh, in CMB also. So now the redshift of redshift of CMB is uh, 1,100, and uh, uh, now it is in a microwave region due to this frequency uh, frequency decrease. By calculating uh, the CMB and uh, redshift, why this redshift is happening? Because it, it happened due to uni uh, universe expansion. And the CMB is an indication to Big Bang theory. So uh, from this redshift of CMB, uh, we, uh, we are validating two, uh, two things. So one is the validation of a Big Bang theory. And the next is the give insights to, uh, uh, give ins uh, give insights to uh, the expansion of universe also. And you can see this is the map of uh, CMB, and, and uh, it, uh, it is uh, W map satellite uh, captured this map. Uh, the, these are the temperature fluctuations, the temperature variations of CMB. Uh, some colors are blue, and uh, some uh, so there are some tiny variations in temperature of CMB. This tiny variations is due to the uh, structure, cosmic structures in uh, universe. Because if the uh, uh, the uh, the CMB near to cosmic structures uh, uh, is uh, less, uh, the temperature is less because of the scattering with the uh, these kind of dust particles, everything. So uh, uh, by using this uh, temperature fluctuations of CMB we can uh, also in uh, we, we, we will get an information about the cosmic structure formation so the next co uh, next thing is the accelerated expansion uh, how this accelerated expansion is uh, um, because we calculate the uh, we have a type 1 supernovae the, that will explain the kursha range the next talk uh, he, she will explain the uh, the supernovae thing and uh, we collect the uh, so we collect the uh, information about the supernovae and they calculate the uh, redshift by by using the redshift of uh, fundamentally by using the redshift of uh, uh, supernovae and the distance measurement we arrived uh, we arrived a conclusion accelerated expansion we know universe is not static but it's expanding but this expansion rate is in an accelerating rate because uh, the expansion rate is increasing over time this is a uh, this accelerated expansion is fundamentally uh, fundamentally we obtained from the uh, redshift measurement of type 1 uh, supernovae and also distance measurement from its uh, absolute uh, absolute brightness things and so what is the reason of uh, this accelerated expansion we don't know I, actually we don't know uh, what is the reason behind this accelerated expansion but uh, we are uh, now we our con not our conclusion we are thinking it may be because of uh, uh, some kind of mysterious energy behind this accelerated expansion this energy is called uh, dark energy we also don't know the what form of energy this is uh, everything so these are the things uh, in this talk. Uh, we first uh, we first uh, see what is light. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Then next is uh, uh, we uh, the light primarily comes in our universe from stars. Uh, and uh, during this journey from stars to our telescope, uh, uh, it uh, lose uh, lose energy, and uh, this light is redshifted. And uh, then the final part uh, we are. Uh, uh, we saw the applications of redshift. The first is the we can use a redshift as a distance measurement. Then we can use a, a redshift to understand uh, our cosmic evolution, how uh, how our universe changes when time uh, time goes. The next is uh, uh, the accelerated expansion and uh, accelerated expansion and the CMB cosmic microwave background. These are the applications <coughs> of redshift. And also we, we saw how to measure. There are two ways to measure redshift. One is the spectroscopic way. The other one is the uh, photometric way. So these are the uh, idea of this talk. Uh, uh, this is a, a short talk. And uh, so these are the takeaways. So thank you.